Knocked away. Jazz trail by eight. And there's the feet to Burke. And the whistle blows on the backcourt violation. He went over and back. Eleven seconds left to play in the third. Hill passes to Hill. The three from George. Here's Booker. Shot is no good. The third quarter. Here's Exum. Down low, Weston Hibbert. C.J. Miles is out there with Watson. And it's Hill in the small forward position. He had a couple in the first, but so far he's been unable to get uncorked here. Watson's shot is good. Those are starting to add up. Of their last five baskets, three of them have been three-pointed. And it's not just great offense, Clark. The defense is really lacking. Not enough energy on their closeouts. Some changes for Indiana. Miami comes in for Roy Hibbert. And it's Luis Scola in for West. C.J. Watson at 6-2 is an outstanding shooting combo guard. He's an excellent marksman from behind the three-point line, which helps his team space the floor. But he's also an underrated defender. Burke, he's checked in for Utah. Count the bucket. Here's Mahimi. Rebound, Utah. Go Bears. Got five rebounds tonight. Now, a severe lack of awareness on his part. He had no idea who he's, he was near the out-of-bounds line. Hill, no good. Jazz trail by 10. And he pounds that one in. Well, that was a dynamic two-hand dunk there. Right in the face of the defender. That was a tough, gritty finish. Here is Watson. And once again, off the mark by Indiana. A shot by Hayward, wide open. Off target from three-point range. You know, he just hasn't looked right to me a bit. Out of sorts, if you will. Something's off with his mechanics. And at least as I look at it. For Utah, they've gone to a fourth in the field since we started the final quarter of plus. Well, Trey Burke and Alec Burks, the, the Burke Burks head coach. <laughs> try, try saying that fast five times. I will not. That is indeed a bit of a tongue twister. But you know, Kevin, these two have a chance to make a pretty special backcourt tandem. Both are really exceptional ball handlers. And I like Alec Burke's ability to attack the rim and finish creatively. And you know, Trey Burke showed in his rookie year that he can shoot it from deep and knows how to run the team effectively. Well, you talk about Burks' ability to finish around the rim. A great athlete. They say he added about six inches to his vertical leap in training with his teammates in Santa Barbara. And with Burks' length and athleticism, the tools to be a tough defender are there. And he's still learning how to play defense effectively and efficiently. But already he's a pretty good rebounder from the guard spot. And it's the Jazz's ball. They've got an 8 nothing run. Hayward kicks to Burks. Uncovered. It's a big high bounce and goes in. They got on this roll a while ago and they just had him look bad. Time called here. Indiana decides to talk it over. Well, he's got to be disappointed with his team's play over the course of this run. And, uh, you know, thus the timeout. you got to talk things over, try to get back into the game. Something has to change for them as they haven't looked good at all during this run. So a timeout is appropriate here. Watching up on the changes now for Indiana. Paul George is checked in for Hill. Stuckey comes in for C.J. Miles. And it's Watson in for Donald Sloan. Let's go quickly over to Doris Burke for an update. Hey, Kevin, during that last break, I heard Frank Vogel addressing his team. He's looking 
for whatever they have left in the tank. He said, I know it's been a hard-fought game, but now's not the time to leave anything in reserve. If you're tired, come out. Otherwise, I expect you to be going all out, full speed. Guys? All right, Doris, thank you very much. Oh! That's his second three-pointer of the half and his third overall. Now, here's Exum. Not a lot of room. Burks kicks to Hayward. It's intercepted. And here we go. George heading to the hoop. And favors with the block. For three, Hayward. Offensive rebound. To the right side. Another miss by Utah. Very little success for him behind the arc today. Just one three-pointer in the first half and still none in the second. Out to Stuckey. This one for three. Indiana moving it around. And George, here we go. Missed it, even after all those chances. In this quarter, he's really been off the mark. He just looks a little bit unsettled. Favor sets the pick for Hayward. Passes it to Burks. Pocket six. Stolen by George. Last break. Here comes Indiana. George missing again. He has just disappeared this quarter, not making a mark at all offensively. And I'm sure he's ready to put this quarter behind him and quickly. Really an extraordinary game for Burks. 19 points. And free throws have been big for him today with six points on the line. Well, you know, he understands the value of those easy points. Also, you know, getting the opponent into foul trouble. Those are big. Those are the, the little things that will add up uh, for a team trying to get a victory. Outside Hill. That's it fly from 18. Here's Burks. A clutch shot if I've ever seen one. Yeah, very gutsy there. What more can you say? He got it done at the best time. Now here is Hill. Time call here. Indiana decides to talk it over. Watson in for C.J. Myers. Just five on the clock. George, that's a two-pointer. It falls! Shot after shot. One after the other. P.G. Paul George. Oh, get it! Oh, oh, oh. Out now. <laughs> now the clock. That is just ridiculous. Absolutely filthy. Oh, I don't come on. Ever seen a dunk like that in the game. I certainly can't remember the last time I saw oh, it. Oh, man, that was just amazing. We've got overtime action now, folks. Clark Kellogg, Steve Kerr, Doris Burke on our sideline, and this is Kevin Harlan. And the Pacers start off with the ball. So the overtime period is now ticking away. Should be fun. Courtesy of Gatorade. All fueled up and ready to go. Let's reset the lineup for us now in overtime. Taking a look at the Jazz. They've got Jeremy Evans. Burke is out there with Hood. Then there's Trevor Booker. And it's Ingles in the small forward. Shot clock at six. And it's Evans missing. The pace is shooting only 32% from the field. Plenty of signs of struggle by this offense today. West kicks to Hill. Here's Hibbert. Second shot opportunity. And the defense looking to protect the rim at all costs. Yeah, I like that. A foul to save the layup. Make him earn it at the line. George is checked in for Hill. 
off on that one, so he goes one for two at the line. Even with the miss, he got the big one there to put him in front. And one action in this one. We're about one minute into overtime. Ties it up, and this next one could give them the lead. So Utah going with an almost entirely new group. Now the free throw is good, now leading by one. Outside, George, beyond the arc. Gobert pulls it in. Gobert's got the glass covered here tonight. 11 boards for him. That's good. Intelligent passing there to make that hoop possible. Here's Burks. No luck. Great D that time from Hibbert. Excellent. Really solid job, actually, by the defense to get in his way as he was going up for that one. Well set in the bit for George. Burks pulls it in. If he can improve on what's been a shaky day for him thus far, they could stretch this lead out. From outside the arc, the shot is off. And Indiana will come the other way. And George kicks to Hill. He's looking for rest and finds him. Can't connect from short range. On the wing, it falls. Well, I doubt that was the plan there on that trip, guys, but uh, they did get the shot to go. The Pacers have gotten off to a cold start from the field in overtime, just 105. And it's Paul George with the... That's foul number two for him. Terrific defensive play to cut him off and square up. And he took a shot. Excellent toughness to get in there and make a play. I love that kind of work. Now, here's Brooks. Wide open look. Nails it! What a difference in this crowd right now, Clark. Yeah, they're breathless, nervous, and quiet. Yep. Wow. It is quiet time, Clark. You got that right. That was a huge shot. Hey, word again. It's George. West is green on him. It's good. This game is all even. And that's now 30 points here for George. That's like a layup for him. He's just wide open out there. Burke dishes to Burks. Burke, the best to Burks. Just five on the clock. Oh, and he misses the dunk. Nice job there, attacking the rim and drawing the contact. Yeah, I like that play there. The defense had no choice but to foul in order to save the dunk. He knocks down the clutch free throw. So both teams making some changes here. Second one is good. We both at the line, and it's a two-point ball game. Those are some big-time heroics at the strike. A little bit of defense, and they can put this one in the wind pile. Time called here. Indiana decides to talk it over. They're behind by two. Five seconds left in overtime. Guys, what do you think? They simply need a basket here, Kevin. With this much time left, I'd attack the basket and try to get something in the paint. We're now about three minutes into this overtime period. The shot by George, no good. And that's an intentional foul. Yeah, no question the right call at this point. You can't let them just dribble it out. That's right. I mean, you got to send them to the line and hope for a few misses. And he does get the second one. And that makes it a three-point lead. A three-pointer here might have us headed to another overtime period. And so it's Utah who's scraped by with a win. Clark, what a game.